A tēnā koutou katoa, ka nui te mi ki o koutou. A tēnā koutou ko hui mai nei, ko tai mai nei, ko hoki mai. I tēnei ahi ahi. I'm Stephen May, I'm the convener of the Social and Behavioural Sciences and on the Academic Executive. And we've had a fantastic day so far. It's my responsibility, privilege and pleasure to chair this session. And uh, because it's been so great up until now, there's just no pressure on the presenters this afternoon. So we look forward to um, what you're going to have to say. And we're going to start uh, with Helen Moiwaka Barnes from Massey University. Kia ora. Ko maho hu ki te rangi te waka, ko fiti te tūpuna, ti te roa i hoana ki tāna pā tū mona ko motukura, ko kapawai te maunga wai kare te aua, ko te riki te marae, ko te kapotai te hapu, ngā puhi nui tonu te iwi. Ko Helen Mora Kabanza hau, he mihi nui ki ngā tangata whenua, ki ngā kaika whakahaere ki a koutou katoa tēnā koutou. I'd also like to acknowledge all the hard work and I think the vision that has come about with the what's signalled, I think, by the induction of, of the fellows today. So kia ora to all of those who have contributed to that and appreciation and acknowledgement. <clears throat> I think it's a really hard question, and I think other people have signalled that too, to talk briefly about what do you do? Um, and I keep thinking, I don't think I know what I do. <laughs> so I asked a few people, a few colleagues, thought I'll do a research project, what do I do? You know, highly biased, no ethical considerations, totally conflicted. And I think from the sort of responses I got there, I was confused as I am about what I do. Um, it was nice to see they appreciated my disinfecting skills and my knowledge about coffee. Um, but listening to the conversations this morning too, I think one of the first things we start to talk about is the struggle. The struggle to make that space in the academy. The struggle to just be who we are and to make those safe spaces for ourselves and the safe spaces for others in that, that environment. And from the research that's come out recently, we know this is an ongoing thing, it hasn't gone away. Uh, so I'm mihi also to the Royal Society Te Aparangi for making this a safer space for us. Um, and also, we want to do our research. And so we carry on, we have these, these different struggles that, that we take on. Um, but it's not just about struggle. I work with Fano, Hapu, Iwi. I talk to them. I learn what their aspirations are, what pathways they want, what are their visions for the future, and just contribute in whatever way I can to that. One of the responses I got back was, "Well, your scholarship's broad because that's what communities want. That's what they need. So that's what you need to do." Um, so I think I have no field of expertise. I have no particular area that I do, because we are scientists and we have always been scientists. I don't think there's such a thing as mātauranga Māori and science. We have used scientific traditions and processes throughout our lives, throughout our trajectories, throughout our history. It's one way in which we generate knowledge that contributes to our mātauranga. You know, if you, the scholars we have here today, we know we didn't arrive in Aotearoa by accident. We didn't just crash land on the shores. We had navigation. We knew where we were going. We knew how to read those signs and signals from this world and from other worlds. We survived and we thrived. And our trajectory as, as Māori scholars, as Māori science, scientists is no different today. It's about surviving and it's about thriving. So we were scientists and we still are scientists. I think it's interesting though that colonisation, when we speak about our science, often one of the first stories that we come to is that story of colonisation. So we were, um, looking at writing a paper about Māori science and how we do our stories and how we do our science and how we do our research. And the first things people start talking about is how our knowledge has been disrupted, how colonisation has impacted on our knowledge and on our practice and on what we do. But then I think over the last 18 months or so, I don't want to praise COVID, but there, we've also been flying. We've been struggling, but we've been flying at the same time. And I've seen amazing things happening with our scholars, with our communities, with our scientists and our scholars in our academies, in our whānau, in our hapu and in our iwi. Seems to me to have been some kind of a clearing away <clears throat> of some of that. Re-remembering and bringing together those knowledges that we have 
of celestial navigation, of Tonga Puoro, of Hine Te Iwa Iwa, of Manawahine, and these things seem to me to be flying. And it's been quite an incredible time, I think, being less silent about wairua, not leaving that at the door of the academy, but bringing those things into our lives. So it's about more than struggling for a safe space. It's about struggling to out wairua, to be Māori in all those things and in all those ways, and to really challenge fundamentally what Western science is. You used to ask the question, is there any such thing as Māori science? We also can just as equally ask the question, is there any such thing as Western science? It's what you name, it's what you claim, and it's what you're brave enough to stand up and refuse to keep silent. So it's more than a safe space, but that is one of the fundamental things that, that we do struggle for. So in thinking about us as scientists and us, how we practice, and this is a work in progress, we started to write an abstract that wasn't about colonisation. It wasn't about how our knowledge had been denigrated or how our trajectory had been broken. It was going back to how we traversed Te Moana Nui Akiwa. It was going back to our long history, our long traditions, our long trajectory of science and research, and thinking about how we can clear that path, how we can think about our science in that way, <clears throat> and to leave colonisation more at the margins. That's not to say it's not incredibly powerful, but we can be even more powerful by having that space where colonisation is that white noise as opposed to stepping on our rangatiratanga. So reclaiming our rangatiratanga as whānau, hapu and iwi, reclaiming our rangatiratanga within our academies and moving beyond safe spaces to really flying as who we are. Kia ora.